Guys, there's a lot going on in this project. We've got all the blue board hung up at this point. Question, we get a lot, blue board versus drywall. Uh, I still don't have the right answer as to why we do it. For us, we're using 5 eighths throughout. We spent a lot of time, as you guys know, working on the framing and getting the framing really flat, but 5 eighths gives us you know, a thicker wall board, but helps with that flatness. We're working with really tight tolerances, uh, 30, 30 second kind of basically across the entire surface, ceilings and walls. So anything we can do to help achieve a really flat wall uh, is important. But you know, a couple details I wanna walk through. You guys have seen, we've done a, another video, is these true fig plates. Um, you know, actually, Nick, before we, before we touch that on that, what is this here? So that is a, a room sensor. So that's actually, we'll use a, a Forstner bit, or not a Forstner, but a spade bit. We'll go an inch deep, and there's actually little, little tabs on the back of this, so it'll hold it nice and tight. We plaster over the face of this. So our thermostats so that we're using. Is these are all tied into your thermostats. Correct, so these are all Tecmar sensors, and we have Tecmar thermostats. And this will sense the room temperature and it'll trigger, you know, the AC to turn on and off. How many of these do we have on this floor? So we have one on this floor and one upstairs and they each run one of the Unico systems. So if in a situation where you had a larger space, you could have multiple and they would actually pull the average. Correct. And then basically make sure the average of the space would be what you're setting at that temperature. Yep. So these are, this again, a lot of this stuff is plastered in, as you you know, as you know, we're working with the plastered in recessed lights, uh, speakers. But what I was, was getting at is these true fig plates. Um, right now, these are set up for drywall. This mm -hmm. is you know designed to get a skim coat of joint compound over them. Uh, our plaster of Van Gerven, uh, they made the comment that you know this might have a different absorption rate. Mm -hmm. So we actually worked with the guys over at Barney and Carey. And we got the file from TrueFig. Yep. Um, Nick, you pulled that file together, put together kind of what you needed as far as uh, box sizes, layout, things like that. We sent them down uh, a couple sheets of blue board and they cut this on the CNC. Yep. I know it wasn't super nice on their bits because the, <laughs> the invoice had a, a few bits on that bottom line. But what this does is now our absorption rate is guaranteed to be the same because we're using the same product. Verge, who is our plaster, is really specific about what we used as far as the brand, right? Correct. Yeah, so this is all USG 5.8 fire rated board. Um, and, and speaking with him, he was mentioning that the you know the glues and adhesives that USG actually uses behind their paper is far superior to you know anything else that you would get. But he's um, also using a USG product for plaster. Correct. Uh, and that was what he would. What the big picture was is making sure that all the products were designed to work with each other rather than using you know an, another brand plaster with another brand wall board. Right. We're, we're working with one essentially system right uh, and that was where that stemmed from is replacing these plates is let's get some usg blue board get them manufactured yep and beyond that you guys actually modified these boxes because traditionally or i shouldn't say traditionally but you know a lot of times we're doing a skim coat of plaster where we're skimming the seams plastering the entire wall and it's you know an eighth inch or less here mm -hmm. we're actually dealing with a much thicker plaster uh and these were going to cause an issue so you got you guys actually modified these we did so um uh, van gerven they installed jacking screws which allows us just like we did in the bathroom upstairs it allows you to manipulate this plate four directions it allows you to be perfectly flush when you're complete so we're going to be adding about three sixteenths of plaster here um and these come stock from true fig at about an eighth uh not a huge issue but this just allows us to be absolutely perfect when we're done now i know true fig actually allows you to space the final plate with some spacers. It does. Uh, this is actually helping avoid that, giving you a mud flange, and rather than spacing the plate in and out, you're actually setting your mud flange at the finished height, so you're not dealing with spacers. Right. You you call them you, you call them jacking screws. If I if I understand correctly, it was really just adding a nut to the back of the existing screw, yep. allowing that when you spun it, it was actually moving in and out of the threaded insert. Right. Which was, I mean, you're talking a few minutes per per box here to get the adjustability, but also replace and guarantee absorption rate. Right. Now, this is, you know, I, I call it paranoid plaster because the absorption rate of this, where we're plastering over it, we're priming over it, we're painting over it, mm -hmm. the likelihood of that being an issue, 
is probably pretty low percentage wise. Right. However, it was something that we said we do have the opportunity to replace it. It's kind of small potatoes as far as time and cost. Mm -hmm. Let's do it because we have 75 or some so boxes here yeah. and they're squares. And if we have all these squares throughout a wall, should there be an issue, you're gonna have these square patches across the wall, which right. we're painting this whole place white, really flat, you know, really intentional uh, flat walls and a lot of light. Yeah. So this was uh, a key detail. Yeah. Swapping these out did take a little bit of time, but in speaking with Verge, you know, if these were, if we were to re leave the jip that they came with in place, he would actually skip over that when he's plastering doing his base coat and he would come back with like an, uh, a Durabond and an Easy Sand. Mm -hmm. So it's just an extra step that he would have to go through. So like I said, although it does take some time to replace these, we do save some time on the back end of not having to come back and do each of these individually. Which was, you know... You know, we can do a whole wall now. Yeah, and in that conversation, understandable, like that, I, I get that that makes sense, you know, using a different material and blending them in with an Easy Sand. Mm -hmm. The problem is our plaster is... 3,000 to, I'm gonna get this wrong, 3,500 PSI, where the Easy Sand is far less. Mm -hmm. So if you know if you were hitting the wall, you would actually feel a difference, or if you if you were to hang something, right. you know, th there's a difference. And now we're dealing with again a different product where we're priming and painting over. Yep. So again, to, to reiterate, worthwhile, you know, to do it now. Uh, we also manufactured some weedy ones. We did. So let's go in the bathroom yeah. and take a look at that. This bathroom is the first floor guest bathroom yep. or kids bathroom. Upstairs, we have the master bathroom. Both of these are getting completely covered in a lime plaster, waterproof lime plaster. Yep. It's really important to note, right? Right. Um, what that means is the floors, the walls, the ceiling, the bathtub that we're gonna get to in one second is all gonna be a monolithic look. Uh, the way I kind of explain it is though, if you have this big chunk of lime yeah. and you carve a bathroom out of it, this is what you should end up with. Uh, really intentional, really modern, really sleek uh, detail. So we have to treat this as, you know, all waterproof. Right. Uh, so we're using the Weedy product yep. uh, because it has a cementitious layer to it. Your waterproofing is actually this foam core um, and we, but we do have light switches in here and, 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 and light details. Same thing with the ceiling. We're dealing with the ceiling recessed light. You know, you guys have done a great job with a lot of the HVAC vents, manufacturing, you know, your own louvers so everything could be plastered in. And again, we sent these down to the guys at Bounty and Carry, yeah. and they did the same exact setup for these light su switches where they're building these boxes right onto these weedy pans. Yeah. And I really like this because now this allows us to be completely consistent through the entire home, you know, from bathroom to, you know, the traditionally plastered walls. Everything's the same, same spacing. Same heights, we, we drop lasers on all these, so everything is perfectly in line. That's actually a really uh, good point you brought up is the spacing, because when you are modifying these true fig plates, there's all these lines and drawings, they do not cut here, make sure you right. cut zones out. And we had that situation out in the living room where we had three boxes mm -hmm. uh, and they the spacing was kind of off. Right. Uh, so this is actually, when you worked with Dovey over Barney and Carrie for, for this, you actually were able to say, all right, this is the plate I need and I need two boxes and let's space them this far apart. Right. And rather than having two plates, you have one. Yeah. So you guys are gonna weedy this whole this whole space. Floor, it looks like the floors are done. Yep. Ceilings, walls. Talk to me about the bathtub because we, just a few weeks ago, we had a nice big ceramic one in here and they had asked us if we could plaster it and we said no. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like you have a few pieces here. We do. So, like you said, um, they didn't like their, you know, ceramic or cast iron tub that they had. Um, it was a big soaking tub. Um, so we said, yeah, why not? You know, we can, we can build you a tub. Um, so what we did, um, we drew this up in, um, in This is a big tub. It is. What drove the size of this? Obviously maximizing our space width wise here, but what drove this depth was this shower pan back here. Pitch so this is a this is a weedy shower pan. It is. It's a, like the weedy Fundo Primo. Um, they sell them at most of your tile stores. Um, but we didn't really want to spend the time, you know, because it can get very time consuming with the pitch and things can go wrong. And it's just peace of mind for us to know that we have this pan. It's pre-pitched, and everything's going to shed water can where I it needs to in? go. Yeah, absolutely. So you can see actually the plywood's all prepped for what I assume will be your drain assembly. Correct. Uh, and as most of us know, 
that needs to be accessed, accessed from below and behind. So I assume that yep. backside here is kitchen. Yep. We'll do, we'll make this connection once we're waterproof in here, right? Correct. Yeah. So the reason we, so we have a rough in above the floor here for this, um, for this tub drain, um, because it's tough for us to make that connection beneath because we have neighbors beneath. Sure. So we can't really access their ceiling. Uh, so we elected to go the rough in above the floor, which is why we actually frame this tub up on some two by six framing. Because traditionally some of these, you know, these, pre-built tubs or mm -hmm. tubs that you buy off the shelf are much lower. They are. This one's a little bit higher, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, for me, I, I know it's actually more comfortable to bathe two, two kids in a, a higher tub because I'm yeah. not bent over, my back doesn't hurt. Um, but this actually is very close to what that, their original ceramic tub or it is. Uh, porcelain tub that they had. Yeah. So how do we put the rest of this together? So you got that right, the, that goes in first. Then we got these side panels that'll go in next. So as you can see the key in the bottom, it drops right in. And um, this goes in the front. I'm gonna get up and in here. Yeah. Go on the face, and we're actually going to... Uh, so all of this was cut on his CNC, right? It was, yep. So we, uh, we drew it up um, and rev it and sent it over to Dovey. And um, he was able to load the files and, and cut it all. Do you know what roughly uh, it costs to get this thing cut? Uh, it's about five, 600 bucks to get it cut. And then these, so you'll notice these sides are a little different. They actually have a, a 90 on the face. Okay. And the reason for that is that we accounted for our finished plaster. So when we're complete, we will have exactly a five inch shelf all the way around um, on all sides. So when this comes down, you have five inches there. Yep, so we're gonna be at a half inch. Um, this is the true test right here. There you go. That's comfortable. Yeah. It's a nice tub. Yeah. Too bad it's for the kids. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a, and since we have a, a wall mounted toilet here, we'll actually have a pair of shower doors here that can open all the way up and uh, won't interfere with any tank or anything over here. So if they are bathing the kids, they're able to open those all the way up. That's a big concern when you do glasses, you know, if you have a splash panel, you know, that's a detail we do a lot as we swing it. But if you if you have a more traditional toilet, you can't with the tank. Right. Which is great with the wall hung. Yep. Great. That's, I mean, that's a killer detail. What about the drain? Because that's a shower drain. Yep. Shower drain doesn't usually have a stopper. Correct. Yeah, so, so that's, if we're, that's if we're, set up for a, a grid drain. Obviously we need a drain with an overflow per code for, for a tub. So what, what we're going to do is we, we are going to actually have Steve from Van Gerven. He'll cut this out. He'll cut a nice square out and we'll wrap at that edge and we'll drop a piece of probably three quarter weedy in there so that we can, and we'll make that connection ahead of time with our tub drain so we can waterproof that connection. Um, and then obviously we'll make the same connection up here with our overflow. So you're using that shower drain really for the pitch and then you're gonna cut that out, modify it to put in a more traditional tub drain. Absolutely. So now you're solving the, the, you know, the stopper and the overflow. Right. So the tub, super cool detail. Uh, is there anything else in here that, that's going on that we should talk about? Yeah, I wanted to talk, so sticking with those glass doors. Yeah. You can see we got blocking here for our hinges because we're gonna hinge these directly to the wall. And over here we can, we're good on our hinge up top but down but, here, but down below. This so, is your radiant cabinet, right? It is. So it does interfere. And I'm wondering if we can come up with a solution to not move this and still make our hinge work. Um, but I'm a little concerned and I'm thinking we're just gonna have to move this entire thing over, which will be a little tough because we have, if you can see here, we marked it. These are our return Feeds, and supply yeah. lines for this cabinet. I think in this case, I mean, this is me thinking kind of on spot is that why not bolt that hinge through the cabinet mm -hmm. and making sure that on that back side that as long as there's no pipe in the way or yep. you're not going to screw into something, you can put some sort of solid blocking to make a, a physical, uh, right. you know, a nice strong connection. Absolutely. You know, obviously we look at this as like, man, you know, we wish that we thought this through. Yeah. As you said, even just that and I can see all the pipes coming up from the, the radiant floor. Yeah. That's a big deal to move it. It is. So I think it's really considering what we can do creatively yeah. um, to make sure uh, that we still have a nice physical connection. Yeah. Um, and there's a face, you know, there's a cover on that cabinet. So you'll never see it. And I, I doubt the homeowners are gonna remove that. I mean, they have no need to really remove that cover. But with that being said, you know, we can still do a nice job yeah. putting a nice solid block in there that makes, that, that isn't something that is uh, right. completely ugly. Yeah, I mean, maybe we paint it or something to make it blend or. Um, one thing I, I, I know we added is this light up here too. Yeah. If you guys are familiar with our under cabinet lighting, we always do that uh, LED basically tra uh, tape light that yep. goes into a uh, linear slot with a diffuser on it 
Right. Well, you're basically doing that times three right. uh, and creating a, a really big one that's gonna wall wash this back wall because yeah. This is your only light, these are your only lights and we actually physically can't get a light in the ceiling here. Right. Yeah, so the way this was drawn from Zephyr, our architects, was that we would have a light that fell in the field over here and then another light directly above this tub. As you can see, we got plumbing stacks that interfere. Um, and you know, during the rough, we didn't really have an idea of where, how big this tub was gonna be, so our light actually fell here. Once we got the tub in place, we realized, oh man, you know, we're real close to this glass. We gotta shift everything. So we shifted these out. But then, you know, to come up with a solution here, I think we had talked about, you know, doing something something like this that we kind of sketched up, you know, having like a knife edge and recessing that light. And we actually found um, a light from, I hope I'm saying it right, Clues. Um, but what it is, is it actually gets plastered in with uh, the weedy. So it's got a leg that comes flush with the ceiling and a leg that drops down. And they actually give you a sacrificial lens. So once, once this is installed, you plaster over the entire thing, very similar to the true fig, pop that plate cover, install your tape, and put your cover back over it. A, you yeah, know, a new wall cover. wash. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna pull up this photo here that was kind of an inspiration. So here's actually the bathroom that we, we pulled up, is though you're, you see this shed of natural light flowing down that back wall, and it really illuminates that shower. So this was kind of our inspiration. Yeah. And obviously knowing that we couldn't bring natural light in, we looked at other opportunities and you're absolutely right. We looked at like a knife edge, but with the, we didn't have the room above. Right. We decided, hey, a linear diffuser is gonna give you a very similar look to that. Yeah. Uh, let's pop up to the master, take a peek at that. Okay. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. All right, so this is our master and you can, we obviously a little bit further along. Yep. Yeah. What, what's going on? So this is all weedy. All weedy. Uh, and this is our, what, first base coat of plaster? Correct. So this is a cement product. I believe it's a stow product is what they're using for their base coat. Just really to bring everything flat and get a nice base layer on there so they can adhere their DevLine plaster. And there's, a lot of, there's a lot of details and a lot of pre-planning here. You know, mm -hmm. you're standing at one of them. This is our glass track. Yep. So this glass track is in the wall as well as the floor protected by, um, it looks like this, this piece here. Yep. Yeah, you can see that. There's our glass track, and we're about 3 16 proud, which is our right. plaster thickness. Correct. Uh, so the goal with this, as everything in this, in this project is, trimless, you know, plastered in place. Yeah. We look above here, we have underneath that red tape, yeah. you know, you guys actually manufactured, or, or uh, Steve, yeah, Steve. Steve from Van Gerben, they manufactured this HVAC grill. Yeah. So it gets plastered in place. Yeah, he did a great job. The the recessed lights, you can see that they're sealed and prepped for plaster. Our uh, speaker here, it's pla it gets plastered in place. Mm -hmm. And then our HVAC register over against the wall. Yeah. Everything is really yeah. well thought out here. And if you notice, so the opening on this grill is actually matched. Just Steve matched it with these five openings here so that we're, it's a little detail, but it's nice to stay consistent with you know, you're opening from there to here. My favorite word is being intentional. Yeah. Uh, which is great. And then it's then going back to the glass track. This is prepped so when our glass gets tipped in, it's plaster all the way around. Yep. Uh, really nice. You can see that they've made everything really tight to all our plumbing fixtures. Yep. And here's the one wall in this bathroom that is not plaster. Right. So this is a, what is a stone? That is a pentel quartz arabescato. Um, stone right there that's a two centimeter stone this was holding up a lot there's a lot of coordination yeah. and this is really kind of like the first step to allow this bathroom to go into completion correct this had to be templated after all of this was done yep uh and i'm looking down below underneath that red tape is two linear drains correct so we are using two schluter linear drains here uh and true to our nature we want this wall to be draining water right into the back side of our you know, tileable, tileable drain cover, which right. is something we pointed out over at our Lincoln project. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with really tight tolerances here. Um, this is manufactured in two pieces. The guys over at United Marble did a great job fabricating and doing the install. Um, but now that this is installed, mm -hmm. we get to go. Yeah. So what Verge and his guys are going to do, they're actually going to meet this stone, you know, they're gonna meet this tight at a 90. So all of these, these small gaps that you see here, they will be hidden and it'll allow us to have a very clean and, and tight look around this entire piece of stone. Same thing with the drain covers. He actually removed the, the Schluter, um, 
membrane. Yeah, the membrane from the top. And he'll actually apply a piece of weedy and custom make these, these covers to match the floor and the walls. And then we'll leave that, you know, we'll have that nice clean reveal along the back side of the stone where the water can shed straight down and into these drains. So what's next steps in here? So next steps in here, um, Virgin and his guys are going to get back in here and they're going to start plastering two stone. Um, they will never plaster a wall and a ceiling in the same day. So they surface always... Surface by surface, right? Right, exactly. So that way they allow a clean, tight edge. And then after that cures, they'll come back and meet that with the following surface. Another thing they, they won't do is they also won't do two uh, adjoining walls. Right. So if they're doing a small room and they, they work at a, a, you know, um, a pace that allows them to hit that level of perfection we're looking for. But if they were working in here, they would work on this wall and the opposite wall mm -hmm. right to your point to make sure that when they do the, the posing walls, they're getting laser straight corners, right. uh, which is really interesting to see that process. But it, it nets for a really great result. Mm -hmm. But I also noticed on the way in here that Pat actually improved from our last video on how you guys are cutting those metal jams. So let's take a quick peek at that. Last week we did a video and it was when we, we, we first started putting together our idea for these door jams, uh, which is Stick the one back one. there. Yep. Uh, you guys have made some significant improvements. What is this? Uh, it's basically, we're trying to streamline it so we can just, you know, Line up our marks, make the cuts, and get the same exact notch every single time. So this is a jig that we created um, that slides over the door jam, nice and tight, and then you can line up um, our two points that we're trying. Want to slide that in? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Now we can slide this in. Basically. Going out or in? Going out. Right there. Cool. So now, yep. basically we make our marks wherever our baseboard comes into our jam. And then it's just two cuts. So this is set so that at full depth, we hit our mark on the depth of our yep. negative reveal. One cut here straight. And then we put this spacer on. This is spaced out so we can fit the saw through. So our space around here. And that's giving you that 45. And then that's our 45. And then that hits right at um, the top of our negative reveal, right where we want it. So. so this is just, you've created consistency and you're gonna have to make, I assume, two of these jigs, right? Because mm -hmm. we have two different yeah. style jams. So two, originally we thought four, but you have to this flip in it. a way where we can flip it over yep. and, and make our cuts. So that's really cool. up front, but once we get rolling, it's Dude, gonna be a lot That's awesome. I'm excited to see this come together. Yeah. Nice work, man. Thank you. As we're making our way down, they're working on the door jams, but you can also see that our some of our baseboard is going in. The guys, Patrick and Lasana, are getting all of this set while Patrick's working on or Pat is working on the door jams. Um, so it's, you're starting to see this unfold with this flush base detail, the white being our poplar milled down, prepped for our regular detail in preparation for plaster. But let's go downstairs and check out that first staircase that's all complete. So this is our main, our main staircase from the common stairway yep. in the building. Again, we're in a uh, five unit building mm -hmm. um, and there is elevator access, but this is, you know, if the elevator is down or you feel like doing a some extra work size, out, yeah. walking up four floors. This is our first staircase. So this, we we worked with Zephyr on the, the detail for this mitered, continuous white oak tread riser, and we added this shadow detail, which is super cool. I love it. Talk to me about this staircase, what, you know, what we started with and kind of how we ended up with what we got. Yeah, so obviously this is an existing staircase, so we are somewhat lucky that it's not conforming to begin with, so. Because we're They're, tight here, the, the the rise and run is a tight a tight scenario. It is, and it's actually on the on the underside coming up the stairs. It's actually exposed, so there's no you know wall framing that supports the staircase. So in order, we couldn't really reframe this thing without you know wreaking havoc on the lobby and the neighbors below. So all we were really able to do was come through and, and level up some of these treads, and and you know make our our runs all 
typical. In that, in this circumstance, and this is something we run into a lot in these older buildings in Boston, is you know having a conversation with our our, our local inspector saying, mm -hmm. "Listen, this is an existing staircase. This is our intention here. Are we okay with it?" You know, typically, if we're making something better, mm -hmm. which in this case they were sporadic in height and depth, yeah, we we evened all that out. So now everything is consistent. So yeah, the rise and the run aren't necessarily to code, mm -hmm. but it should be really comfortable because it's always the same. Right. That code question comes up a lot is, we didn't have the opportunity to make this code compliant because of restrictions with the building and the right. space and everything else, so we made it better. So James and Zach actually spent a couple days here on site fitting these treads down. Down below we have that standard winder, yep. uh, but we also have our flush baseboard detail set in here. I see your plywood blocker. I assume that's for your half inch shadow reveal. Uh, but what is going on with this little wire here? So you are correct. So that is for a quote unquote shadow reveal, but we're actually gonna stick a light um, in that gap. Uh, Clue, same manufacturer that makes the bathroom light. Uh, they make a, a micro aluminum track that's a, less than a quarter inch thick. And that will actually mount to the back side, similar to our reglet, um, but it'll just throw some additional so this is probably very similar to our undercab lighting. Very similar. And this is helping solve the issue of, we have an open staircase above, which we have plenty of natural light. We have light above there mm -hmm. that's gonna pour through this staircase. Other than that, we have one recess at the bottom of our stair, yep. and this can get very dark. How are these switched? There's gonna be a switch here for them. Um, we're also gonna be installing a, a motion sensor on these so that you know when someone walks by here, um, it automatically illuminates for you. Same thing at the bottom of the stairs. When you open that door, um, it'll illuminate and allow you to walk up the stairs. So if you're walking up the stairs with 20 bags of groceries because you want to make one trip and you felt like doing exercise, the lights turn on automatically for you. Yeah. This is staircase number one. We have the open staircase here above. I know the steel is in manufacturing now. Yep. And then we have the mono stringer, which we have delivered, installed. The treads are sitting in the shop. Excited to put that together. I know yeah. you're waiting on final deliveries to come in through the roof so we can put that together. Correct, yeah, we don't want to risk damaging any of that. We have a lot of glass in this place too. Tons. Uh, and what I'm looking at here is, this is gonna be our glass detail. Um, this is kind of pretty finished in the sense yeah. of this is ready for glass. It is. Uh, with the exception of our hardwood detail. Yep. So what we're looking at is our blue board you have a nailer here and a nailer here, and then you have this gap. And below here is an aluminum channel. If we go up one flight, we can actually see that aluminum channel. Yep. But that glass is gonna drop in and you're, you guys are gonna fit your oak floor on both sides yep. to have this finished look. Absolutely. Um, you can see we, we have a pocket here because um, we, you know, we needed to think ahead about how, how are you gonna install this glass. So this, you're talking about this pocket here, Correct. which is all the way into our landing. Yep. So this will eventually get covered up. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll fill that in and cover it with our flooring. Um, but in order to get this piece of glass in, obviously this exposed stringer will need to be in place first. So we won't be able to, you know, do the traditional lift and drop here. So this will have to be, uh, you know, a drop and a slide in. Because this slides into the bottom of that steel stringer. Correct. So the bottom of our steel stringer, we are going to have a three-quarter U-channel that's going to, you know, it'll run about 48 inches to catch our 42-inch railing. Um, but this allows us to get far enough out here where we won't interfere because this is about a five inch deep um, Glass pocket, so we'll have to drop it and then slide it in in order to make everything slide fit. it in set it and It's Forget permanent. It. Yeah, you guys made great progress uh, this week uh, Really excited to see a lot of these details come together. I know a ton of coordination yeah. on your end um, But before we go We need to answer a lot of you guys question is how we're gonna suck all the the dust and the and the trash and the Someone said that there would be bugs in here, which we don't have any bugs, but we're gonna go grab some dust and trash and just show you how easy it is to uh, clean that out before we go. All right, so this is probably a normal week's worth of dust if you don't clean your house that regularly. So uh, just see how easy this is gonna be to clean up. Start with the trash. So far, so good. You guys need any tips when I'm when I'm backing my stairs at home? I usually do the, out, the outside edges first. A lot of the dog hair, do the back, and then you do the field. Shouldn't be that bad. But in all seriousness, we appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for next episode. 
Uh, and as always, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications.